Hello, I'm Michael Redman, professional Go player. In this video, I'm going to continue my series of videos for beginning Go players. And the subject of this video is going to be the net. And that's a special way to capture stones. Those of you who have already viewed my video about the ladder will see some similarities. I do suggest that you have seen that and try to remember what I talked about in that video. Or if you haven't, I will put a link in the description. And I'll probably manage to put one up there somewhere also. Okay, we'll start with this shape. And uh, white has a fairly strong position in the corner here with these stones all linked up to each other, creating a little territory there in, this, in the corner. So we'll say that that white group is okay. Uh, but this one white stone is not connected to that group because it's diagonal here. Those two stones are not connected. And they're cut off by these two black stones, which also are not connected. Both of the black stones have extended to the side. So these two black groups have three liberties each. So for the time being, they are okay. The white stone has two liberties here. So in my video about ladders, I showed you a way to chase this, which would go like this and just chasing the stone all across the board in a diagonal. And I'll leave it here because I did talk about this in the previous video. However, there are some cases where that doesn't really work very well. For instance, if there was a white stone somewhere in the vicinity, like this, this would be breaking the ladder, and if black still tried to take in the ladder, then the white stones would connect up, and at this point black's ladder would be going nowhere. It would not work. So in this position, if we assume there's a white stone somewhere in the vicinity blocking the ladder, it could be even on the other side of the board with something like this. Even in this case, the ladder would not work. It would hit that white stone eventually, and it would not be possible to capture the white stone in the ladder. And we're starting with the assumption that black wants to play a move that will capture this white stone. So this is the net. The word net comes from a fishing net because it's very similar to throwing a net on water because the stone that black is going to play, it doesn't even touch the white stone. It's like this. It's just on top of the white stone, blocking white's escape out into the center. It's when the white stone tries to get away, maybe extending in this direction, when the net closes tighter and the white stone is going to run out of liberties. Now this group, of two stones, they are filling their own liberties, and the white group has only one liberty left. If white moves out once more, then finally the net will close and black captures the white stones. So this is an, an example of the net in which black has captured the white stone, and when white tries to escape, it will just get worse and worse for white. In actual play, white would not try to save that stone. In fact, white would maybe play from the opposite side to induce black to play some more moves to capture that one white stone. In fact, in Go, you can often find uh, positions where the player will throw away a stone or sacrifice a stone to get some positional advantage. So it's not as if this is finishing the game, but it is a good idea for black to be able to capture a stone with this net tactic. Okay, now let's look at this shape. It's very similar. This white stone and this white stone are separated. They're diagonal, so they're not connected. And the two black stones here are cutting them, with black being cut also. And again, the assumption is that the ladder is not going to work, so we could imagine that there's a white stone somewhere around here. And in this case, the net is the way that black will capture this white stone. And so it's very much the same shape. Basically, this is the way uh, a net looks. It's, it's the same shape every time where you're sort of throwing a net on top of the white stone. And it's not touching the white stone, but if white tries to move out, the white group will be captured. And so again, it's, it's not good for black to play, for instance, an Atari here, because then white would be able to escape and would eventually connect up to this zone in the center. So let's look at another position from a real game. Okay, this is a position where white has a group that is 
on the side, probably alive. And this white stone is cut off. So white is cut off at this point, which is diagonal. Also, the black stones are cut off here. And with a white stone here, the ladder is not going to work for black. So let's try the ladder first. If black plays here and chases diagonally, as I showed in the ladder video, eventually white will link up to that stone on the left. And the ladder, although it can continue for a bit, at any time white can take one of these black stones and the ladder is going to stop there. It's going to be a failure for black. So to go back, if black uh, plays a ladder from the other side, this doesn't work either. With that white stone blocking the way, white will eventually connect to the stone on the left and get a strong position. So this is an example where black has to capture that white stone in an it. So black plays here and the white stone is captured. So once you have seen this position and learned it, I, I think the net is a relatively easy move to remember. It's almost always the same kind of shape here. And again, I should mention that white will not try to escape when white knows this white stone is dead. It would be better for white to sacrifice the one stone and play from the outside, placing stones on the board that do have some potential to accomplish something later in the game. So thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, like it, and please subscribe to view more videos like this. Thank you.